remember what Corinthians is a, about? It's a letter to churches about bodies. bodies. It's, uh, if you haven't been convinced so far, that passage has got to convince you, right? That 1 Corinthians is a letter to churches about bodies. Hi, I'm Denise. Uh, anyone who doesn't know me, I'd love to get to know you. I'll be out having supper as well. Uh, I may even hang around the slack troubleshooting table. <laughs> but that could be interesting. Um, this passage, frankly, it's not rocket science, really, is there? It's not like I've un- got to unpack a whole lot here. Uh, Paul is saying the church is a body, the body of Christ, in fact, and like any human body, the body of Christ is made up of different parts and they all need to work together to uh, function well. That's exactly the sort of thing that we're talking about here. See, somebody goes, oh, I should move that. And that's what the body of Christ does. Um, The body doesn't just need eyes. It needs ears and fingers and livers and spleens. And so in that passage that we read, Paul makes these three points. Firstly, the body functions well because it's made up of different bits. And there are people with different roles, people with different gifts, and it functions well because there are different roles and different gifts. Secondly, he says, all the bits are crucial whether they seem important or not. So no bit is more important than any other bit. And then finally, all the bits are interdependent. We need each other. And if you don't care about the other members of the body, if you think that you can go it alone, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot. So this isn't necessarily even about kind of virtuous behaviour, it's, it's actually wisdom here. Well, I could talk a lot about those points, but they're kind of self-explanatory. And what I really want to do tonight is reflect on the body of MCC. So let's do that. I am really encouraged by what is happening at MCC. I hope you are too, because we seem to be a people who want to be together. You know, Shane talked about what happened at GYG the other night, Um, 47 people, 40 came, 40 people want to be together. The other seven probably did too, but, you know, they needed to be somewhere. That's quite a remarkable ratio, isn't it? In fact, I was there till 10 (laughs) p.m. That's the point at which GYG pulls all its grills down and kicks you out. And when I left, there were still seven people there who were chatting. And that little group was actually mostly some of our neurodivergent folk. You know who you are. Some of those were even newbies to our church and they seemed to feel right at home. Now, as a neurotypical, I had, although some people might, I've, <laughs> being in that group, you know, we're start, I'm starting to wonder now. Um, But as a neurotypical, I've never been a minority in a group of neurodiverse brains. And I just sat back and watched this group sort of happen around me. They were connecting over a game of rapid fire questions. And the audacity of those questions and the comfort that everybody seemed to feel in answering these rapid fire questions, it just took my breath away. There are so many people who see ASD as a liability, but I sat there thinking, oh my gosh, I hope these people all decide to stay because we really need these people. This is awesome. There was such a wealth of abilities and strengths and ideas in this group. And the next day, 
a new channel appeared in our MCC Slack space. It was a channel where people can ask for and offer lifts to church for some people who don't have transport and some people who do. And that idea was born out of that little group. MCC is incredibly lucky to have a significant group of neurodiverse people at our church because unity and wholeness come from diversity. There are people in our congregation who struggle with depression or anxiety. Some people who have been through quite traumatic times with family or partners or other relationships. There are people here who are dealing with trauma that's been inflicted by the church. And I have heard so many stories since I've been here of MCC people who have gone to quite extraordinary lengths to help someone else who is going through a crisis. And often the people who are helping are helping because they know what it's like to have been through that crisis because they've gone through it themselves. Depression, anxiety, mental illness, relationship crises, none of these disqualify you from being a valuable member of MCC. In fact, sometimes what seems to look like a weakness turns out to be a strength because it enables you to understand what someone else is going through in ways that other people can't. Weakness that turns out to be a strength. If you've been here through the whole series of 1 Corinthians, doesn't that sound like the early chapters of Corinthians where a weak, crucified Messiah turns out to be the most powerful force in the universe? Or what looks like foolishness turns out to be wisdom? Remember how God wins by choosing to lose? It just sounds like that. I'm also encouraged by the leadership that we have in this congregation. There has to be leadership in any group of people, some people whose role it is to kind of hold things together, to um, think through things like future direction, to make sure the bills get paid, to make sure we've got insurance, to deal with issues of organisation, and sometimes to make really tough decisions. And we have a church board that does these things, and it's a group of um, six people. Two important things, have I counted that right? Is that right? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, math isn't my strong suit. Two important things to remember about this group of board members. They're all volunteers and they've all been elected by you. Occasionally, hardly ever, but very occasionally, I hear someone say, oh, the board should be making sure that this happens, or the board should be doing that. And I think, you know, they're volunteers, right? Like, you know, they've got jobs and um, they've, they don't have a whole lot of time. Now, we want to hear feedback for sure. We do not want to shut down suggestions or constructive comments about how we might do things better or more efficiently. But I just want to give our board a shout out tonight because they spend their time serving this congregation and nobody gives them a medal. They don't do it because they want a medal, they do it because they genuinely care about this community and they genuinely want to see it flourish. I've never said this to the board, but I probably wouldn't have taken on this role if I hadn't been confident that there was a solid functioning leadership uh, group. Because when you take on a two-day pastoral role, two days a week, you know that you're going to be limited in how much you can realistically do. And I wanted to know 
that I had support and uh, that the board didn't have unrealistic expectations of what I might be able to do. And I remember them interviewing me before they let me loose on the congregation. <laughs> and the thing that I remember most about that interview is, and it was a Zoom interview, it was how they all listened to one another and how they allowed space for everyone's opinion. They respect each other and they like each other. That's obvious. And sadly, you know, that's not always the case in churches. So I am very grateful for them. It's not just the people on the board, though, who contribute to MCC and help it flourish. Lots of people here give their time to make stuff happen. Um, Basil, who's not here tonight, he's been doing our volunteer rostering for the last three years. He's stepping down at the end of this month for a well-earned break and Deb is stepping into that role along with a couple of helpers. And Basil didn't want any public thanks, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so I want to thank Basil for his faithfulness in what is not always an easy job and one that uh, happens behind the scenes and you only notice it when something goes wrong. Basil's just one example. I could mention the worship team. I could mention the soundies, the supper people. So many other people who bring their skills and their time to make this body function well. Equally important, not an official role, we have people who intentionally look out for others. There are people here whose gift it is to talk easily with people. <sighs> be good to have that gift. I'm really glad that we have people like that because it's not something that everybody can do and not everybody has to do it because we don't need to be the same. It's diversity that's the key to the body functioning well. So don't worry about what you can't do, do what you can do and it'll just somehow all come together, I reckon. Even though we've got this um, church leadership group that I was talking about, it's a, it's a pretty flat leadership structure, which means that there's plenty of scope for other people in the congregation to do things without having to submit a 16-point plan and 25 pages of risk assessment. <laughs> so you've just heard about Hendrika and Michelle, who are very into food, they thought it would be a good idea to support a local restaurant and so now we've got this opportunity to get together again in between our monthly dinners uh, and try something different. So go, check it out on, on the 19th of June. Other people have been taking initiative too. For those of you who have already joined our MCC, MCC Slack community, our social media kind of workspace app, I see that we now have a gardening channel. <laughs> and I had a look at this gardening channel like, huh, a gardening channel. And people are swapping sweet potato cuttings on this gardening channel. There's a cross-stitch channel. Yes, there's a cross-stitch channel where people who know what to do with a needle and thread are, are talking about a coffee and cake and cross-stitch afternoon. Now, I won't be attending <laughs> because, as you know, it's one of my life's goals to never to learn how to sew. <laughs> and I think that if I start on cross-stitch, it could be a slippery slope. So I'm staying away to that. I can't afford to uh, start down that. But look, if that floats your boat, then join the channel, meet some like-minded people uh, within our diverse congregational body and if you haven't already joined MCC Slack community, well, you certainly do not have to uh, because the newsletter, the weekly announcements are going to keep you updated uh, as usual. But Slack is proving to be an excellent tool to help people connect with each other, other people in the church, and organise these sorts of initiatives easily and without necessarily uh, you know, going through the hierarchical structure. I'd better pick that up before I 
Yep, Bonner. So, uh, so yes, join Slack. Uh, and if you are a bit tech challenged, as I said, great opportunity tonight. Uh, Jacob's going to be at our troubleshooting table too. And actually, I'm just going to spring this on everybody. But is there somebody else here who's been whizzing around Slack and really don't find it a difficult thing? Because I'd love another volunteer at our Slack troubleshooting table. Anyone? <laughs> Crickets chirping. Deb! Cool. Okay, excellent. See how easy that was. There are, um, oh, if you're watching online and you need some help with Slack, then please send us an email or leave a message in the Facebook streaming chat and we'll organise some help for you too. There are rumours of a camp later in the year. Nothing definite yet, but watch this space. Someone floated the idea at one of our monthly dinners and before the end of the night, a group of volunteers had put their hand up to look into camp possibilities. We don't really know what's happening. We're just sort of leaving it to this group. Again, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's risky, isn't it? Yep. It's a risky business for a congregation to operate like a body and not like a corporate structured organisation. It's a very risky business giving freedom to people, freedom to the body to take initiative instead of holding the reins really, really tightly to make sure that everything is very well controlled. It's risky to encourage people to use their gifts, their skills, their time thoughtfully because I mean, anything could happen. And you know what? Some of these ventures might fail. My parkrun venture, you might remember that from a couple of months ago, it was a bit of a flop. I mean, a few people came a couple of times. It never really gained momentum, although I'm thinking about trying it a little later in the year, so you never know. It has been raining, yes, and we've had floods and... <laughs> Some ideas just might not get off the ground. People might accidentally step on someone else's toes. Feelings might get hurt. There might be conflict. It may be that the board might have to step in occasionally and say, you know, we can't actually do that because of this reason. Very, very <sighs> risky. But few good things come without risk. And I reckon that this congregation can work things out as we go along. We love one another. We know we're all flawed people. We know that things don't go right all of the time. We can make allowance for that, can't we? We can be patient when things don't go perfectly. And I think it's... It's okay if we don't get it right all the time. We can just give it a go and see what happens. Church isn't a spectator sport. You can stand on the sidelines and watch for a while, but if you want to play, at some point, you've got to step onto the field and join the team. If you would like to be more involved, if you'd like to be more engaged somehow in MCC, then come and talk to me or talk to one of the board members. And if you can just put your hands up, they're the people to uh, grab over supper. Or you can send a message on Slack, or you can email me. Uh, there's a link in the newsletter for emailing as well. If you've got an idea that you'd like to try, but you just need a bit of help, or you're not quite sure how to go about it, then then come and talk to us or talk to someone else in the congregation that you think might be able to help you. So I'm really encouraged about the body here at MCC. But I'm also encouraged by what I'm beginning to see happen in the wider church because I think the tide is on the turn. 
It pains and frustrates me that the wider church has cut off part of its own body or maybe shot itself in the foot is a better um, way of putting it by largely excluding LGBTQ plus people of faith. It frustrates me not only because of the pain that it causes to people who are being excluded, it also frustrates me because the wider church does not know what it's missing out on. (laughs) True unity can only come from diversity. The wider church needs the rainbow Christians in order to be whole. I think that it's inevitable that the wider church will eventually embrace Christians of diverse sexualities and genders because churches that don't will die. Young people in schools and universities, it is a common experience now to have close friends who are non-binary, close friends who are bi or whatever. And once you know someone then lesbian moves from a category to a person. Trans moves from being something out there to someone right here. And once categories turn into human beings, judgment and fear tends to dissolve. People are people. We know that. And when people in the wider church come to have more rainbow folk in their social circles, it suddenly becomes really hard to understand why the church would treat a bunch of ordinary people so badly with such judgment. It just doesn't really make sense. So it's coming. It's coming and nobody can stop it. But here's what I want to say to you. And to all LGBTQIA plus Christians, present and future, when it does come, when you are finally included and invited to come in, don't you dare doff your hat and feel grateful that you've been allowed in. Don't you dare be content to sit quietly in the pew, keeping your head down and staying out of trouble. You march in there with your head held high. You march in there knowing that you have something invaluable and unique to offer the body of Christ that they've been missing out on. You bring your glittery faith and your sparkly love of God, and you show the church how you can light up every dark and gloomy corner with your colourful rainbow selves. You bring your non-binary selves that refuse to fit into the traditional gender categories and be a gift to those people, however they identify, who don't fit the neat gender stereotypes either. The diversity that you bring will be a gift to the church. You teach the wider church what you've learnt about grace, the (coughs) radical acceptance of another human being, regardless of how different they are to you. That's a strength of our church. You teach them what you've discovered about Christ, the one who has radically accepted you. You teach them about persisting in faith, about shared suffering and how that shapes a community. You teach them that unity and wholeness can only happen when diverse people come together, work together and love one another. And that is how the body of Christ, the whole body of Christ, will benefit.